good morning. It is filled to the brim and it is Saturday, November 4th. And this is our final kind of installment on turning points. And we've been talking about the scripture, Isaiah 30, 20 through 22. This is the Lord, the, the scripture the Lord gave to me about this season of turning points. So I'm going to read that to you. Isaiah 30, 20 through 22. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Then you will desecrate your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a minstrel cloth and say to them, Away with you. And we've been talking about God getting our attention. It is a season of turning points. The Lord is saying this is a season of turning points. And a lot of times we like to hear that word. We say, oh good, somebody else is going to change. Well, or circumstances will change. But the Lord is saying, no, the turning point is within you. I also read the other day, the beginning of that chapter in Isaiah 30. It says this, Isaiah 30 verse 1. Woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance but not by my spirit, heaping sin upon sin. He is talking to his children who are obstinate, who are doing their own thing, and part of that own thing is idolatry, uh, serving their own will, serving their own flesh, and God is calling them out. And he is using affliction and adversity to get their attention because he wants them, in a sense, to be idol free. He wants their hearts' affections to return to him. And I've been talking about this, these turning points. And yesterday I talked about how a lot of times the things that we have the greatest challenge for is in the small things, not the big things, the small things. And our obstinance can be regarding the small things. And one of those things that isn't quite so small, but we think it's small, is our thought life. The way that we think. And I mentioned yesterday the scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, that we have to take captive every thought and bring it in submission to Christ Jesus. Anything that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God. And I'm saying I, be, I have heard in the words of believers, Christians, even the mix of worldly philosophies with scripture, which is half truth. I've, I've seen some of the things people are following in their lives that are worldly philosophies. And this is something that the Lord is confronting and wants us to turn away from being obstinate in that and following our own ways, our own plans, which worldly philosophies actually cultivate because they want us to follow our flesh, follow what feels good to our flesh. And I'm saying the Lord is confronting us and he is telling us in this season as his children this is not a word for the world this is a word for his children that say I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me well the Holy Spirit is talking to you and he's saying turn away from those things let him come in and have an inventory of those things in your life particularly those things that you have been obstinate regarding the way of thinking specifically your way of thinking. A lot of times sin is birthed in our ways of thinking. We have a concept of the deconstruction of faith. The deconstruction of faith is directly connected to a way of thinking. A seed the enemy has sown that has been built up, become a stronghold, a lie, a deception, a half-truth that the enemy has built up in the mind of a believer, somebody that had been a believer and has been cultivated and it has destroyed their faith because now they believe what the enemy is saying through the philosophies of the world, through the messages of the world. That's what the enemy did in the Garden of Eden. That's how this whole mess started with human sin. Let me read that to you. Genesis 31 through 6. I like to always go back to this because 
many times believers do not recognize the half truths that are coming to them and they let it be seated in them and they even regurgitate it as if it's truth and it's not. It's from the enemy. It's partial truth. That's why our filter must be the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say? Does the word really say this? You must not eat from any tree in the garden. And the woman said to the servant, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. And then the enemy says to her, he challenges her in that word. And he says, Well, you will not certainly die, the servant said to the woman, for God knows. Now he's speaking on the behalf of God. The enemy is speaking on behalf of God. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, the truth, the half truth is this, that they will know now evil. They already knew good. But now what's happening is she and Adam will be introduced to evil, which will create the destruction, the sin that will follow through till 2023. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, see, she thought. When the woman saw in her mind, when she saw, she made a conclusion that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. I want something God is withholding from me. She took, see, the enemy convinced her God was withholding from her. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. He was with her and he ate it too. Did God really say challenging the word of the Lord? She wanted the wisdom that the enemy was presenting. The wisdom of the world. She wanted to add that to what she already had. That's very dangerous. I, I think that the desire to gain power through worldly wisdom is very dangerous. And many believers think it's okay. They, they, um, it's the small fox. It's the small fox in the vineyard that they allow to be present. They're not realizing, or maybe kind of realizing, but denying that it will destroy the vineyard, the fruitfulness of their life. Let's read New Testament on this. James 1.15. Then after desire has conceived. See, remember, the woman, I just read in, in Genesis 3, verse 6, it says, and she saw that it was also desirable for gaining wisdom. Let's go to James now. James 1.15. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. She desired it. She desired something outside of what God had for her. She saw it pleasing to her. She wanted it. You know what? It's so important that we challenge ourselves on this. We are believers. We have the Spirit of God in us, the Spirit of truth in us. That we are be, we beware of these false things that are in our world that are sown, seeded into our mind just through exposure. That we take those things captive and we bring them under submission to Christ. Those thoughts that are distorted or false from the enemy because they try or their assignment is to produce desire in us so that we will sin. Galatians 5, 9. This is what Paul writes. A little leaven, and this is in the Amplified, a little leaven, a slight inclination to error, or a few false teachers, leavens the whole batch. It perverts the concept of faith and misleads the church. A little leaven. Are you allowing a little leaven? Okay, Pastor Lynn, you know, I read my Bible. 
but I like to expose myself to this. A little leaven. And he's saying a little leaven's dangerous because it corrupts, it perverts the whole thing. Beware of that. And you know what? In the turning point of our lives right now, believers, we need to beware of the little leaven. Those things that we have adopted so that the world likes us. So that we don't have, you know, maybe a contrast to the world. So we fit in. You know what? Fitting in is not what we're supposed to do. We're to be salt and light. We're to expose the darkness. If you're thinking it's not a big deal, that's dangerous. You know the Corinthian church, this is what Paul says. The Corinthian church thought... It wasn't a big deal. And they were actually big on wisdom. If you read about the church of Corinth, they liked wisdom. They liked the world's philosophy. They liked to have dialogue and debates. That's what the culture around them was big on. And Paul is confronting the wisdom of the world and then following the wisdom of the world or following the wisdom of false teachers that have the little leaven in a sense. And they have become puffed up with wisdom and wise in their own eyes, and as a result of allowing the philosophies of the world to taint their faith, taint their community, their church community, they have accepted or ignored sin in the camp. Very, very uh, significant sin in the camp. And they start to, they have a boasting about them. Let me read to you, 1 Corinthians 5, 6. This is what Paul says. He's the father of, of this church. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? He's talking about them boasting in themselves, and yet they're allowing sin in their camp, sin in their lives. This is what the message translation says, the, the Bible translation that's called the message. 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Your flip and callous arrogance in these things bothers me. You pass it off as a small thing, but it's anything but that. Yeast, too, is a small thing, but it works its way through a whole batch of bread dough pretty fast. So get rid of this yeast. Our true identity is flat and plain, not puffed up with wrong kinds of ingredients. The Messiah, the Passover lamb, has already been sa sacrificed for the Passover meal, and we are the un unraised bread part of the feast. So let's live out are part in the feast, not as raised bread swollen with the yeast of evil, but as flat bread, simple, genuine, and unpretentious. He's saying, don't have flip and callous arrogance regarding sin in your life or sin in the arena God has placed you in. Maybe it's your family. Do you have flip and callous arrogance? Or are you just kind of accepted? Or it's okay? or you're kind of in denial, or you have allowed it. He's saying, don't be callous towards that sin. It's destructive, and it's deceptive. Don't boast about it. You know, it's interesting. Other uh, versions of Scripture translations say, you're glorying in it. Rather than using boasting, you're glorying in it. Don't be deceived. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Actually, if you go back to the Old Testament wisdom literature, Proverbs 3, 7 says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You know, it's dangerous to be wise in your own eyes. And we are wise in our own eyes when we take on the world's philosophies. If you go back to Genesis chapter 3, wise in your own eyes, walking in your own ways. If you go back to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1, you're walking in your own ways. You're doing your own things. And you're, you're my children. Isaiah 5, 21 says, Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Did you know that the worldly ways of thinking cause us to be wise in our own eyes rather than submitted, taking every thought captive, bringing it under submission to Christ. And in that wisdom in our own eyes, we become complacent to sin, callous towards sin. And the Lord is saying it's a turning point. Are you callous towards sin? Are you like the Corinthian church that's just allowing it? You don't want to confront it? You don't want to rock the boat? It's just a turning point now. The Holy Spirit saying, I'm telling you what way for you to walk in. It's time for you to walk in my ways. The Lord says, I'm alerting you. 
I am calling you out. You have a turning point. This is a time for you to mature. It's a time for you to be cleansed. I am giving you a clarion call. Get rid of those idols. Get rid of those small foxes that's in your vineyard. Get rid of that, that leaven that's in your, your world around you. That level that is going to quickly destroy the whole batch. Where's your heart's desire? Is it him first? If it's him first, you're going to walk in his ways. Spoke a long time on this. It's a big subject, turning point. It's time. Pray about this word. I'm praying about it for my life too. God bless you.